he rose from anonymous announcer to the most recognisable voice on British radio during the Second World War. He announced many of the great events of the period. Here is the news, and this is Alva Liddell reading it, became an inadvertent catchphrase. On the 10th of May 1940, Germany invaded Luxembourg, along with Belgium and the Netherlands. The complete capture of the small principality took them less than 24 hours, and amongst the prizes gained was the international radio station Radio Luxembourg, which had been much listened to by the British during the 1930s. The Luxembourg government had closed the radio station at the outset of the war to protect the neutrality of their country. But the station and its transmitters were quickly taken over by the invading German forces. Soon they established English-language propaganda broadcasts featuring, most famously, William Joyce, usually referred to in Britain as Lord Haw Haw. Germany calling, Germany calling, Germany calling. You are about to hear our news in English. The last week has been supremely eventful in the history of the world. It has witnessed the climax of the first great German campaign against the major forces of the Allies. Consequently, that summer, the BBC decided that British listeners must be able to recognise instantly the authentic voice of the BBC. Consequently, they brought to an end their tradition of having nameless announcers and newsreaders. Instead, they built a team of newsreaders that would be both liked and recognised by the British public. This team was led by John Snag and his deputy, Alva Liddell. The rest of the team initially included Bruce Belfridge, Stuart Hibbert and Frank Phillips. All were quickly transformed by the war from being anonymous announcers into household names. It was on the lunchtime news on the 13th of July 1940 that Frank Phillips became the first newsreader to identify himself. But there was concern that, named or not, they all sounded the same, with their BBC received pronunciation accents, making it easy for the Germans to imitate them. So in 1941, the BBC added Wilfred Pickles to the team. He was a Yorkshireman with a discernible British regional accent and was the first such broadcaster to ever be employed by the BBC on a national station. Alva Liddell was born and brought up in London of Swedish parents. He studied piano, piccolo, cello and singing and when at Oxford University was notable as an actor. After some brief teaching and singing jobs he applied to the BBC who were looking for someone who could speak Swedish. Liddell himself tells the story. I also applied to the BBC for this reason, that in 1928, while I was at Oxford, the BBC had wanted somebody who could speak some Swedish authentically and who could speak English with a Swedish accent. <laughs> and I was expert. This led to him joining the BBC in Birmingham as an announcer before transferring 18 months later to London, where in 1937 he became deputy chief announcer. He would now arguably become the most recognisable voice on British radio during the war, to whom it frequently fell to make some of the great announcements. On the 11th of December 1936, he read on air the abdication statement of Edward VIII. This is London. A quarter of an hour ago, the Prime Minister came to the bar of the House and handed to the Speaker a message from His Majesty the King. Here is the text of the message, which was read by the speaker. After long and anxious consideration, I have determined to renounce the throne, to which I succeeded on the death of my father. And I am now communicating this, my final and irrevocable decision. Then, as the tension mounted with Germany's invasion of Poland on the 1st of September, 1939, it was Alva Liddell who delivered the news to the British people. These are today's main events. Germany has invaded Poland and has bombed many towns. 
General mobilization has been ordered in Britain and France. Parliament was summoned for six o'clock this evening. Two days later, with the BBC expecting imminent news, Liddell was sent to Downing Street to report. Liddell himself tells the story of the famous broadcast that day. We were manning uh, number 10 Downing Street and the war room round about September the 3rd in case of anything. You know, there might have been uh, government announcements immediately on the outbreak of war to be read from the war room, as indeed they were. Uh, something might have been happening at Downing Street. I happened to be there on that morning and knew already that there was going to be an important statement at 10 o'clock. I didn't know what kind. About a quarter to 10, Prime Minister's Secretary had to be this. And this was a communique giving the terms of this country's ultimatum to Germany, saying that it would expire at 11 o'clock and the Prime Minister would broadcast at 11.15. I then stayed on after doing that and announced uh, Neville Chamberlain from the Cabinet Room and was the only person with him in the room while he made the terrible speech he had to make. Yes. This is London. You will now hear a statement by the Prime Minister. I am speaking to you from the Cabinet Room at 10 Downing Street. This morning, the British Ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. Being the only person present in the room when Neville Chamberlain made his momentous broadcast on the 3rd of September, he was able to observe his mood at that moment. He was uh, totally absorbed in this, to him, ghastly end to his efforts. He was a, a grief-stricken, despondent man. Yeah. With the arrival of war, normal everyday life in Britain had to be put on hold, and a string of new administrative arrangements had to be made, including general mobilisation, air raid precautions, the blackout, rationing, and the evacuation of children from inner city centres. Much of this type of information was brought to the British people in a calm and clear manner by Alva Liddell. The evacuation of British children is going on smoothly and efficiently. The Ministry of Health says that great progress has been made with the first part of the government's arrangements. Railways, the road transport organisations, the local authorities and teachers, the voluntary workers, and not least, the householders in the reception areas are all playing their parts splendidly. Many of the big stories of the war were reported in news bulletins read by Liddell, including at the height of the Battle of Britain. Here is the midnight news, and this is Alva Liddell reading it. Up to 10 o'clock, 175 German aircraft had been destroyed in today's raids over this country. Today was the most costly for the German Air Force for nearly a month. In daylight raids, between 350 and 400 enemy aircraft were launched in two attacks against London and South East England. About half of them were shot down. Liddell was again the presenter that brought the news of the attack upon Pearl Harbor. Here is the news. Japan's long-threatened aggression in the Far East began tonight with air attacks on United States naval bases in the Pacific. Fresh reports are coming in every minute. The latest facts of the situation are these. Messages from Tokyo say that Japan has announced a formal declaration of war against both the United States and Britain. The Japanese air raids were made on the Hawaiian Islands and the Philippines. Observers' reports say that an American battleship has been hit and that a number of the Japanese bombers have been shot down. Alva Liddell remained with the BBC after the war until the end of the 1960s, working as an announcer, a newsreader, and as a narrator of books, as well as a TV presenter. But he will always be best remembered in Britain as the voice of the news during the Second World War.